Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's December the 1st. I'm just down at uh, Toronto Harbour Front, Lake Ontario, close to Trillium Park. We're doing some uh, plane spotting today, not to be confused with uh, terrain spotting. Uh, so here's my setup here. I've got my RTL SDR version 2 with a about uh, maybe a 30 centimeter antenna. And I'm just looking at dump 1090 to see when we're, we're going to try and look at some ADSB packets if we can. So uh, dump 90, uh, 1090 will tell me when we're receiving something and then I'm quickly going to go to GNU Radio uh, Companion and we're going to see, we've got a model there, and see if we can uh, capture the packet and display it. So that's the, uh, that's the plan. When I see uh, some activity, ADSP activity on dump 1090, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go to GNU Radio and see if I can capture the packet. So we've got some activity there, so I'm going to shut this down and I'm going to go to GNU Radio. Okay, here, so here's our uh, block diagram. We've got our RTL SDR here. We're sampling at 2.4 uh, mega, megabytes per second and center frequency 1090 megahertz, gain, full gain. And I'm just going to take the baseband, turn it into a real number, and look at it on a scope. So let's see. We'll compile that and then run it. And we're looking for activity at 1090. So I'm going to put a squelch on here, or a trigger rather. Yeah, so there, yeah, we're getting packets there. So those are our ASK packets. So I'm just looking at the blog post here. The blog post um, for ADSB out has basically the structure. There's a 112 uh, bit or 120 microsecond packet from ADSB out. Uh, I have a brief introduction here about ADSB, where it came from. It came out of ATC RBS mode A, mode C, and mode S. There's a little block diagram of how ADSB works. So basically, a plane flying over. Uh, periodically um, outputs its navigational and sensor information on, on 1090 megahertz and it goes down to a ground station. There's another frequency in use, uh, I think in the United States called uh, the UAT 978, that's to relieve congestion. The older system, basically the way it worked was there was a interrogator along with the uh, surveillance radar that would send a pulse out to a plane and then it would respond in mode A and C. So the plane had to be interrogated, but nowadays the planes just output their information periodically without interrogation. So that's ADSB. That's what the packet looks like. It starts off with a preamble that's eight microseconds long. So you've got a pulse here, a pulse here, a pulse here, and a pulse there at well-defined time. So with this preamble, you can detect the start of a ADSB packet. There's a typical structure for 120 microsecond uh, long packet. There's the preamble. Uh, the first five bits are your DF, your downlink format. And then there's CA, the capability, the aircraft ICAO address. There's some ADSB data in there in parity. So that's the structure of the packet or a typical packet. There are, there's quite a few varieties of them. Uh, I've got a Psycho simulation. Uh, what you can do is construct the packet in Psycho's lab. And you create a structure and you read it in and then you multiply it basically with a sine wave at 1090 megahertz. So basically it's amplitude shift keying, 100% amplitude shift keying. There's the packet. So I just put in a random number here for the, um, the preamble I, I, I built uh, accurately. And, and in here for this data, I just put a random number just to simulate what it would be. And that's what the ASK, look, ASK looks like. Um, to see the sidebands, here is a picture of the spectrum, but the trouble is you're at 1090 megahertz and you're only shifting two megahertz away, so you can't see the null. So what I've done here is I've shown you, this is ASK. Let's say we had a carrier at one kilohertz and the data at 100 bits per second. You can see that there's a data null plus or minus 100 hertz from the carrier. So whatever your data rate is, you have a null on either side. Um, here's the model that we use to decode uh, the ADSB. I'm using a GNU Radio Companion. So I'm using the newer QT GUI, GUI 
and I've got the RTLSTR source block. Uh, I'm taking the I and Q data, and I'm just creating a, uh, the I and Q. I'm just creating uh, the magnitude, which basically is just kind of your ASK demodulator, and then I'm going into a time sink. To look at the data correctly, you really should have uh, a trigger, a delayed trigger, and that way you can you can see it accurately. So there's um, there's a picture of 112 bit or 120 microsecond pulse, and you can you can see the preamble here. And if you blow that up, uh, there's the preamble. There's your first pulse, your second, your third. This from here to here is eight microseconds, and these are all at the right uh, the right uh, points. With the RTL, the maximum sample rate is 3.2 megasamples per second. Now, the uh, data rate coming out of ADSB, the uh, bit rate is one uh, megabit per second, but the pulses are actually half a microsecond wide, which means that the data nulls are two megs either side of the carrier. So you really need about four megasamples per second. So 3.2 is a little bit too small. So we don't get perfect rectangles here, we get triangles. So that's just an overview of how I decoded the, uh, the data.